the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God some praise. He's an awesome God. He's a worthy God. We want to welcome you to Triumphant Church where you can receive your blessed breakthrough. God has something in store for you. Come on, say Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship with one of us. Yes, Lord. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. To our God. Come on, lift your voice and say every praise. Every praise is to, is to our God. Every word of worship. Every word of worship with one of Triumphant Church in Nashville, Tennessee, a place where you can connect, grow, and serve with other believers. And now it is time to experience a word from our senior pastor and founder, the Honorable Bishop Fred Matthews, Jr.
Well, greetings and praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm certainly excited that you are tuned in to the Word and Worship uh, tonight with the Triumphant Nation. No matter where you are watching from, we're excited to have you a part of this amazing worship experience on tonight uh, in this Bible class. Listen, be sure to tell me where you are watching from, whether you are right here in Tennessee. Let me know what area you're in. Uh, Antioch, represent Goodlitzville, North, South, East, West, Nashville, where you're at. Lebanon, Clarksville, uh, Mount Juliet, uh, Gallatin, Hendersonville. Go ahead and check in real quickly. Uh, those of you who are on the East Coast in Atlanta, uh, those of you up in New York, so glad that you are tuned in tonight. Our friends in Chicago, thank you for tuning in. Go ahead, let us know where you're watching from. St. Louis all the way to California on the West Coast. I'm always glad to have you as a part of this worship experience. Uh, also, if you are watching on YouTube, hello. So glad. Those of you who are on our church website right now, www.triumphantnation.com. I'm excited that you are on. And of course, our Facebook family. Now, uh, if you hadn't already done so, uh, when you get a chance, make sure you like our church page, Triumphant Nation. Feel free to write a review. Uh, and as always, be sure to like, uh, comment, and share on this particular broadcast. Tag somebody. I love it when we tag people. We're bringing them on into this worship experience with us. Uh, so grateful that you are uh, joining us in this time of prayer, in this time of worship, in this time of the Word. I'm excited about that. Listen, before I get into the Word, before I get into the Word, this is Youth Sunday. This is Youth Sunday, and we are going to have an amazing time. Listen, I hadn't seen a lot of the Triumphant Nation since March. Uh, so this is an opportunity where I will get a chance to see the people that I cover spiritually, their families. We have an outdoors park and praise celebration. So, uh, make sure you wear your mask. Uh, it's going to be awesome. You're going to be right in the vicinity of your car. So feel free to bring your lawn chair and all of that type of stuff uh, to enjoy worship. We're going to have uh, various uh, gospel singers as well as a part of our worship experience this Sunday. And just a whole lot of fun. We're also going to have some giveaways. Yes, we're going to have some giveaways on this Sunday. So make sure that you come, that you be a part of what is going on in the house of the Lord, except it's going to be outside of the house of the Lord. We also have food that we are going to have. So you do not want to miss this Sunday, Triumphant Nation, be a part, Ignite Weekend. Uh, also, wear your Ignite shirts. If you don't already have one, make sure you reach out on our church group page so that you can join in on the fun. Uh, also, we're going to be blessing uh, a few of our youth financially as well, so I'm excited about that. All right, so with that being said, that's all of our announcements. Uh, let's make sure that we continue to keep in prayer those who are sick, those who are shut in, those who are going through bereavement, uh, those that are going through trials and tribulation. We want to pray for them in the name of the Lord as a church family. Let's make sure that we keep that up. Also, I want to uh, make sure that you are keeping your social distancing. Make sure you're keeping your social distancing. Those of you who are around people, wear your mask. Praise God. Hallelujah. We do not want anybody getting sick unnecessarily. So make sure that you are doing that, and we're definitely going to do that on this Sunday. Uh, so bring your mask. We're going to be checking as you come in, even though we're still going to make sure that we are at least six feet apart. 
All right, let's get into the word tonight. Uh, how many winners do we have? How many winners? I believe everybody is a winner or at least should want to be a winner. You know, that's what I'm talking about tonight, uh, winners, joining the winner's circle. You know, because I believe this, that nobody signs up to fail. Nobody signs up for anything to fail. Nobody uh, starts a business to fail or uh, signs up for school to fail. When you sign up, generally, you're in it to win it. And anyone that signs up for something, uh, they're signing up to win in whatever it is. Uh, listen, anything that you are going to do, this is what I believe when I'm talking about the winner's circle on tonight. I believe this, that anything you're going to do, if it's winning, you cannot do it by yourself. People who go solo, me, myself, and I, usually, usually those are not winners. It takes a team. Anybody who has a ministry, I'm talking to you tonight. Anybody who has a business that you're trying to build, you need people. You need them. Uh, you need a team. Nobody is doing it by themselves. And the greater the anointing in your life, the greater gift that God has for you, understand that you're going to need teamwork. Now, many people say they want to be a part of a winning team, but a lot of times folks are not willing to go through what it takes to be a part of a winning team. And listen, for many of you all, uh, with the assignment on your life, those of you who I'm talking to tonight, with that assignment on your life, you have been called to be a part of something amazing. You have been called to be a part of something great. You have been called to that. And understand, I want to declare this in your life, that in order Amen. To do this, you must have the right mindset, and there are certain challenges that you must make sure that you overcome. Now, I want you to declare this tonight with me. I want you to declare it, amen, uh, whether you're sitting in your living room, whether you are in your garage or whatever. I want you to put this even in the comments, that I must be a part of a winning team. I must be a part of a winning team. Go ahead and line up that timeline real quickly and say, I must be a part of a winning team. Connection is so important to the next level. Come on, listen, there are some challenges that go along with being part of a winning team that you, I'm going to talk about on tonight. But first, you must gear in your mind, I must be a part of a winning team. Now, think about even Jesus himself assembled a winning team. For those of you who say, wait a minute, Bishop, that's not me. I'm a loner. I, I, I don't do all of that. I don't even like people. I'm not really talking to you tonight because you got to get a different revelation that God don't want you in that, that, that sp head space right there. There are times of isolation and consecration when, when there's a specific thing that God has you to do, but usually after he gets through downloading into you like he did John or Paul or whoever, it is for the greater good and to connect with people in a greater way. So he'll isolate you to build you up, but it is for a greater cause. And I think about Jesus who sets forth the example. He assembled a team. Go with me to Luke chapter number five. I'm going to read real quickly verses 1 through 11, and you'll find this on your screen. It says, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Verse number 2 said, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Verse 3 said, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, pull out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. 
The next verse, verse number five, uh, it says, Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night long and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, because you say so, I'm going to let down the net. The Bible says in verse number six, when they had done so, they caught such a great number of fish that their nets began to break. I tell you, obedience is something else. It'll bless you. Verse number seven said, so they signaled their partners in the other boats, look, come help us. Come help us. And they came and they end up filling both boats so much so that the Bible says the boats began to sink. Verse number eight, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions uh, were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. Verse number 10 says, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, will you fish for people? Verse number 11 says, so they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Uh, they, in other words, they joined a winning team. They joined. They stopped what they were doing, and they joined a team. And I'm here to tell you real quickly that there are four challenges that you're going to have to make sure that you get in your mind and that you overcome if you want to be a winner. Now, I want you to focus <clears throat> on number one. The first challenge that we have is that you have to trust. You must trust. That is your first thing that has to take place in your life, is that you must trust. You must develop a trust level. Notice in verse number 10, and that will be found on your screen, it said, do not be afraid. And here's the promise. I'm, I'm taking you out of this boat. In other words, you're going to uh, go and you're going to be catching men instead of fish. What was the Lord's promise to him? I'm getting ready to enlarge your territory. That's what the promise was. How many of you have God promised something? How many of you have God, amen, gave a word? He tells them, don't be afraid. You got to believe. Come on. You are going to have to trust the promises that God has made. And let's be honest, most of us, many of us, have a struggle with trusting people. In fact, some folks say it out of their mouth, I don't trust nobody. There are some that are very limited in their trust. So the first challenge to you is, is that you must learn to trust. You've got to ask God to deal with your trust issues. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, the number one challenge is trust. Amen. If you're going to be a part of something great, if you're going to be a winner, come on, you have got to trust somebody. Ah, oh, glory to God. And let's be honest. Again, we have issues many times with trusting people. Many of us don't trust because of bad experiences that we have had with other people. Many of us uh, have trust issues because of what happened at the last church. Uh, many people have trust issues because of what has happened in the past. Amen. And so we'll hold who God has sent to bless our life and take us to another level, and we'll put that person on probation for a crime that they did not commit. Come on here, because understand that if you're going to go to another level, amen, you're going to have to connect with somebody that you trust. And many of us don't trust because of those experiences, those bad relationships. We have our guards up, and we're looking for the wrong thing, amen, and we hold these things. But you're going to have to learn how to trust. 
Trusting means that you're going to have to believe in them. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I don't know, amen, how many of you really, amen, can really just admit, Lord, I need some help when it comes to trusting. God, I need some help. Amen. Whoo! It ain't nothing wrong with saying, God, I need some help. Amen. Imagine being married to somebody you don't trust. Uh, that, that's a bad thing. That's a stressful relationship. Going to a church where you don't trust the pastor, where you don't trust the ministers. Go, go, understand, y'all, amen, that you cannot live your life, amen, holding on to things, amen, from the past. You have to ask God, Lord, help me, amen, to move forward in my life. Amen. Get over that challenge of trust. Had Peter, amen, in our text not gotten over that, he would have stayed stuck on the level that he was in. Amen. Hallelujah. The next challenge, not only must you trust, but the second thing is you must follow. Come on, somebody. There's your next challenge. Amen. Because some folks, they don't like to follow. Amen. To follow means, amen, that I got to remain focused on something. Amen. Go to verse number 11 with me. Amen. It says, so they pulled their boats up on the shore. You'll see this on your screen. Amen. And they left everything. And here it is right here in the scripture. It says, and they followed Jesus. In other words, they had to remain focused on Jesus. To follow means that I will follow your lead. To follow means I'm not going to do my own thing. Amen. I, I think my mic is clipping here. Amen. To follow, amen, means that I, amen, have been assigned to follow you. To follow means that I have to keep up with you. Amen. Not, not, not you come running after me. Amen. And many times, amen, we have uh, folks that have not learned the art of following. Amen. You have to keep up. Amen. You have, it's not somebody chasing you. Amen. But following. Amen. There comes a point in your life. Amen. When the anointing is there. Amen. That you must learn to follow. Amen. You must keep your focus. Somebody say, I've got to follow. I've got to follow. Amen. You've got to remain focused on the team. Amen. That you are on. And if I am going to be a part of a winning team. I am going to have to trust. Amen. I'm not only going to have to trust, but I'm going to have to learn how to follow. And let me say this real quickly. It's really synonymous because it's easy to follow who you trust. Many times folks have a problem following when there's a breakdown in trust. And we live in a day and time, come on here, uh, where people do not want to follow. Think about what if Peter would have said, no, I, no I'm going to do my own thing. You know, I, I, Jesus, I, I got experience. In fact, I got more experience in fishing than you do. Aren't you a carpenter, by the way? So here you're telling me, first of all, how to fish. Uh, we're, we're out here, and, and, and now you're going to tell me abandon this and all of this type of stuff. But, but, but imagine what Peter's life would have been had he not decided to follow. Not, come on here. He, he, he could have chosen to go another way, but the Lord helped him, amen, to go and enlarge his territory. You've got to trust, and you've got to follow clearly. Everybody hear me real clear, because I, I, I need some Alicia's to hear me. Amen. I, I need those who really want to be great in God to hear me. Uh, one thing about the prophet Elisha, amen, he, he, he talked, amen, and he followed after Elijah. Uh, you never read in scripture where Elijah had to go looking for Elisha. Elisha told Elijah that wherever you go, I'm going to go. I'm going to keep up with you. In fact, the bomb was so great, he was, he, he was saying nothing but death 
uh, will be able to separate. So I'm following. And when you have a follow mentality, when you have a mentality, amen, that Lord, I'm chasing after you. I'm chasing after that anointing. I'm chasing after the mentorship that you have placed in my life. So the challenge is, amen, not only must I trust, but I also must follow. Amen. I must follow in order to do it. Are you submissive enough to follow? Come on, somebody. Are, are you really submissive enough? I know you're a grown man, but are you submissive enough to follow? Come on, I know you're a grown woman, and, and you're paying your bills, but are you submissive enough to follow? I need you to hear me, amen, because following, amen, is going to lead you to your destiny. Uh, come on, so not only must you trust, not only must you follow, but number three, if you're going to be a part of this winning team, here it is, number three. Uh, I hope I don't lose you on this. It's going to get a little tight. Uh, you must be open for correction. You must be open for correction. If you're going to be a part of a winning team, there will come times, and hear me, beloved, there will come times in your life where you're going to get checked. Oh, help me here, Lord. Come on, and you must be open for the correction. Let's talk about correction just for a minute. I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter number 16. Come on, we're going we, let's, let's to stay dealing with Peter now. Let's stay dealing with him. This is after the boat experience. You know, he, he trusts Jesus. He did now follow Jesus, and now... It comes a time where Peter have got to be corrected. And I, I'm going to say a strong word that a lot of folk don't believe in anymore. He got rebuked. I remember, you know, a lot of times uh, folks are not ready for rebuke. Come on here. But open rebuke is better than secret love. Matthew 16 and 17, y'all will remember when Jesus had asked his disciples, uh, this is that passage where he's asking them, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah. And Jesus, you know, they, they're going on and Jesus say, Yo, okay, that's good, but who do you say that I am? Peter rises up and Peter says, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And in verse number 17, Look at Jesus' response. Now, I don't want you to miss this. Look on your screen. It says, blessed are you, Simon of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. Jesus gives Peter a compliment. Man, you are blessed. He told him, God, man, you, you are connected to God. Come on, the, the, the Lord had to give you that revelation. He calls him blessed. But look at this. If in the same chapter, you know, Peter starts uh, to talk to Jesus. When Jesus starts saying, I'm going to go away, and all of that, Peter is like, no, uh, you know, you can't go, and all of this type of stuff. Same chapter, verse number 23, just drop down to that. Real quick, verse number 23, Jesus turned to him, turned to Peter and said, Get thee behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You don't have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Now, wait a minute. One scripture, you're blessing me. And another one, you're rebuking me. And this is what the Lord is saying. That many of us, we are good at being complimented, but we are horrible when it comes to being corrected. Oh, my God. We, we, we are great when we're getting accolades, when we're getting compliments. But when we have got to be checked, when we have got to be straightened out, when we've got to be rebuked, that's when our character begins to go another way. And if you're going to be a part of something great, if you're going to be on this kingdom team, 
There will be some days where you're going to be corrected and rebuked. Come on now. And what we must understand, you are not perfect. And so this is why you can see in one verse, you're getting praise. And in the next verse, you get a rebuke. Because somebody in your circle, some, you have to have a spiritual covering to help you stay in line. Come on, you have got to have someone. You have to be able to, che to, 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 to be checked when you are off in order to help you to be who you need to be in God. Everybody is not going to always talk about how wonderful you are. Everybody, it's not all about, you know, your great ideas and, uh, and we're putting this together. That is not what helps you to grow. Come on. And if, hear me now, it's going to get real tight right through here. Give me a little bit more monitor, John. If you are going to be a part of something great, come on, hear me now. I'm going to need you to not be so sensitive. Come on here. I'm going to need you to be able to be corrected when you're off, when your attitude is not right, when, when you're flipping off the screen. Listen, I believe many people are using this word, help me Lord, are using this word church hurt. And, and really, that's not what it is. It's not church hurt. A lot of people cannot stand correction. And you cannot be a part of of a winning team, and everybody got to go around you and handle you with, with kid gloves and tiptoe around, hoping that you don't get offended, hoping you don't leave the church, hoping you don't leave the team. The devil is a liar. You, you, listen, if you're going to be stretched in ministry, if you're going to be who God has created you to be, you cannot be overly sensitive because it, it is only going to hurt you. Listen, anybody from old school church, if you're from old school church, just go ahead and, and put in the comment section, old school, old school, old school. Listen, I, I grew up in old school holiness church. And let me tell you something. If I was overly sensitive, I would not even be in church today. Man, I, I grew up in the church where they checked you, baby. And, 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 they, and, and let me tell you, I'm not talking about being called in no office checked either. Come on, man, I grew up in church where we would get checked if we were wrong. We would get corrected. We would get rebuked. Come on here. Baby, my former pastor, I won't, I won't even call his name, but I will say I'm married to his daughter. Come on. My, my pastor did not have a problem with getting you together right in the microphone. And then he'll call you up to the altar, pray for you, and slay you in the spirit. And guess what? We didn't leave the church. Come on. A real pastor will get you together real quick. And even, even if you get mad in your flesh, come on here. We took it because we knew that it was the truth. Come on here. That sensitive spirit, come on, will cripple you from growing. That sensitive spirit, amen, will hinder the anointing in your life. You've got to be teachable. You must be correctable in order to grow in God. Come on, you can't be like, well, I'm grown. I'm grown just like he grown. Come on. L let, let me tell you something. Disrespect can never happen when you're talking about team. Come on. It, it, when you're talking about your pastor. Come on. It, even that alone demands respect. Listen, you cannot talk to your pastor as if he is your equal. Uh, we going old school tonight. And I know you grew up in a house where you called your mama by her first name and you called your daddy by his first name. And I know some of you all are in houses where you, you let your teenagers have general conversation with you as if you are equals and all of that type of stuff. Amen. But the devil is a liar. When you do not have a respect of person, come on, growing up, what you are doing 
is ushering in a spirit of insubordination. When, when you allow your kid to call you Sarah, when you come on, you, I, I let my kid call me Fred. Uh, come on, when, but we we grew up in a time where we had to put a handle on everybody's name. It was Mister Such and Such, Miss Such and Such. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. That handle taught us about roles. Come on here, and, and we're living in this day and hour where folks saying that well they should have a right in order to 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 express themselves and. And this is the reason, amen, why we have dropouts. This is the reason why they're getting hit with billy clubs because they don't know how to respect authority. Amen. You've got to get to the point, hallelujah, where you learn how to submit. Come on here. You do not want to have an insubordination spirit. And if you're going to win, not only do you have to know how to trust, not only do you have to know how to follow, but you must be open to correction. Yes, your grown, bill-paying self. I know you're in your 20s. I know you're in your 30s. Come on, I know you got grandkids of your own. But you must learn how to be corrected. Oh, praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Come on, come on. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. People I'm close to, People who I'm really close to, my God, I'm talking about, you know, who I'm really close to. There, there is a difference. If you're going to win, come on, people who I'm, oh my God, there's a dynamic preacher. Let me just say this. One of my sons in the gospel, you know, and he, he was doing something stupid one day, you know, that put his character and put his credibility in jeopardy. And, you know, I took my fist and bowed him right in the chest. You know, I had another one. Just being honest, had another one. Glory to God, was doing something crazy. You know, and he was on the road of getting ready to wreck his life. And before I knew it, we were in the office. I jumped on him like white on rice on a paper plate in a snowstorm. Before I knew it, I, I had hit him before I even knew it. Because I saw the train wreck. And you know what he did later? He thanked me. Come on. Today he's a powerhouse in the spirit realm. Listen, I got a lot of people who go to triumphant church. But there's a small amount of people who are actually pastor. And you've got to get to the point. Amen. The Bible says that you know sons versus bastards based on how well they can receive correction. And if can't nobody say nothing to you, if no one can correct you, if no one can lead you when they see you going down the wrong path, that then, beloved, you are really not a son. You, you're really illegitimate. You may go to church, but I dare you to start being pastored. I dare you to submit yourself under authority. Those who are really pastor, come on, I correct often. They'll tell you. I got people in the church, amen, that are being pastored for real. And when they are corrected, they don't run to the church down the street. Come on, they don't wear the ministry out and, and talk about the pastor and the members and try to burn the building down on their way out. No, they understand the power of subjection and submission. And if you want to be something in God, you must have a teachable spirit in order for somebody to help you to get there. Oh, God, I'm, I'm preaching hard. I, get, I got to get out of here. I got to go sit down my house. Hey, hallelujah. In fact, I dare somebody on here. You know, if you have a problem, amen, with being corrected, you have a problem with being rebuked, I dare you to open up your heart right now and say, Lord, help me. I don't know where that seed came from, where can't nobody tell you nothing. Uh, you, listen, you'll end up messing up a good marriage because you can't keep your mouth closed. Come on, you'll mess up, amen, something good in your life because you're so heavily opinionated that can't nobody correct you. But the devil is a liar. If you're going to grow in God, you have you must subject, amen, to the authority that God has placed in your life. 
Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I, I, I figure views probably going to really start dropping off right through here because nobody wants to go through the process. Nobody wants to go through the rebuke. It's much easier to say you're judging me. It's much easier to say, amen, that I've been hurt. But no, you got to get to a place where you learn how to sit down somewhere and let God begin to grow you in the process. All right, challenge number four in my close. Challenge number four, if you're going to be a part of a winning team, here it is, you're going to have to sacrifice something. You are going to have to sacrifice something. Whether it's time, whether it's money, resources, your gifts, your talents, you're going to have to give up something. Verse number 24, my last verse, put that on the screen. The Bible says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple, woo, come on, here it is, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Deny yourself. It ain't going to be easy. That's why he said, take up your cross. Come on, listen, when... When I was a student, I was single in church. And listen, I, I, let me help everybody that's single. When you're single, you should be married to the church. You should, you should be married to, first of all, it'll help you stay saved. It, uh, the, the reason some of you singles can't keep your legs closed, the reason some of you singles can't keep your pants up, yeah, I'm going there tonight, the reason some of you singles are so dedicated with finding a man and finding a woman is because you have not married ministry. You've got to get to the point where you occupy, amen, doing the work of the Lord. And every single man and every Every single woman should be married to the church. You should be cleaning up the church. Come on, you should be fixing up. I, I, I'm going to help you tonight. We shouldn't have to have a rotation schedule with a bunch of married people with kids and you got 60% of the church that's single. You should be cutting the grass. Come on here. You should be painting. You should be cleaning the transportation. You should be volunteering with youth. You are supposed to be married to ministry. And watch God bless you. Have I got a witness here? Come on. Uh, uh, Bishop, that's easy for you to say. You, you married. You got kids. Let me tell you something. It ain't always been that way. Baby, I, I, I know I've been married 21 years, but guess what? I'm not 21 years old. There was a long period that I was in church, and I was single, and I was committed to the work of the Lord. I served my pastor. Come on here. I served the church. And, and the only thing, listen, I didn't have no life outside of church. I went to work, I was in graduate school, and my life was ministry. That was my life. Y'all don't hear me in here. And it's funny, amen, how busy so many people are. But let me tell you, when you are all focused, amen, and you, you, you're not doing the work of God, it is not the will of God. Come on, singles. I, I, I was doing my thing, working at the VA hospital uh, 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 next to Vanderbilt. I was, I was doing my classes at night at TSU, uh, certain days of the week, amen, and I served faithfully the man of God. I was the bishop's armor bearer. I was over the youth. Come on here. I had my own little apartment. And guess what? I obeyed leadership. Uh, there were times where the pastor told me to let somebody live in my house. There were times we would have guest speakers. And instead of putting them in a hotel, he said, Brother Matthews, you, you got a nice apartment. Put 
put the preacher up in your house. I didn't say I pay the rent over here. I didn't say you can't tell me what to do with my stuff. Come on here. I submitted to the authority that I was under. I, 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 I Listen, there are so many people that got problems with submission. Amen. And if you have problems with submission, you cannot grow in God to be who you need to be. I'll never forget. I'm going to help you tonight. I'll never forget my pastor, amen, telling me one I, I was preparing uh, for my licensure as a speech-language pathologist. I had to take a test, amen, and, and, and with the licensure test, uh, for the, for the, it, it wasn't just for the state, but it was to practice speech-language pathology all across the United States. And in order to get that CCC certification, I had to get 680 on the Praxis test in order to pass uh, and become a licensed therapist everywhere that I went. I'll never forget the day before the test, I was preparing, I, I was getting my mind ready and all of this type of stuff. And my pastor called me because there was a conflict in the congregation. He said, I want you to go over and I want you to go talk to brother such and such and his wife. They're getting ready to tear one another apart. Now here I am uh, working on my test. Here I am trying to prepare. I'm thinking I'm going to get in the bed at about 8.30 at night, try to be well rested, be well prepared. Y'all don't hear me tonight. Amen. But my pastor called. And, and, and when he called, amen, I answered the call. I went over to that house. I'm talking to the husband and wife. Now, mind you, I'm not even married myself. But God put the man, my, me on the man of God's heart to go and resolve that situation. I went, amen, and I got there. And I didn't leave until about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Now, some of you I would have said that's crazy uh, for you to even do that, that that's not common sense. But I know about submission. I know about authority. Let me help you. The next day, I had to report to Tennessee State University, downtown campus, the Avon Williams campus, and I had to take that examination. It was a six hour test. I had to get 680 on the test. Well, after I took the test, my results came back and I got 660 on the test. You know, the devil tried to play with my mind. The devil told me, had you went home like you supposed to, got well rested, then you would have been okay. But but listen, it's something that I would fail that test I, 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 by just one, no, two questions. I had failed it by two questions. Here it is, my life, amen, that I have worked hard to get this master's degree. Come on, I didn't go through online class. I didn't get no mail-in degree. I had sat there, amen, and worked my way through six years of school. And now I have a degree in hand, and now I don't have the license to practice what I had studied for. Ah, uh, the enemy started trying to play tricks with my mind. But guess what? I didn't go to my pastor and say, you made me fail my test. I didn't go to my pastor, amen, and try to, try to check him. You know what I did? I kept on serving. I kept on believing God. Some of you all are looking right now and saying, well, that's stupid. That don't make sense, but let me help you. It wasn't three weeks later that I got a letter in the mail finding out. No, I got an email. Amen. And they sent this email and said that they had changed the requirements in order to get a licensure uh, to practice speech therapy. And instead of needing a 680, all you needed now was a 650. Woo! Come on here, somebody. Just like that. You know, I filled out that paperwork. I sent those test scores in where I got that 660. And guess what? Within a month, I, I, had, I, I, I got a new position. I got a new contract with Metro Schools. I end up making three times the amount, amen, that I was making. And I just believe. Now, call me crazy. Call me arrogant. But I just believe God changed the whole system 
system because I'm his child. I'm here to tell you, if you want to be in the winning circle, if you want to be a part of something great, I dare you to obey God. I dare you to sacrifice. Folks may call you crazy. Folks may say you're brainwashed. Uh, uh, folks may try to hammer down on you and say you don't take all that. But you say greater is he that is within me than he that's in the world. I'm trying to get somewhere. And I'm not going to allow somebody, amen, out of the will of God, amen, to make me miss my miracle. Anybody ready to be a part of the winning circle? I dare you to say I've got to trust. I've got to follow. I got to be able to accept correction and I don't mind sacrificing because I know there's nothing that I sacrifice that God will not repay double fold in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you Lord. I praise you. Somebody say trust. Somebody say follow. Oh my God, somebody say uh, take it. Come on. Take, take the correction. Take it. Take the rebuke. Take it. Take it. Come on. Take it. It's from my good. Take it. Come on here and sacrifice. Sacrifice. It, you, you'll be a winner. You'll be a winner. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk upright. You want to be a part of this? You want to grow in God? Give God what you got. Be willing to give it up for God. Be willing to sacrifice. Even, listen, even when you don't get credit. My, my past, I wasn't on my pastor's payroll. He wasn't, he, he, I wasn't getting nothing. When he told me to let folks in my house, he, I, I wasn't getting paid. When I had the youth at my house on weekends and I was serving the man of God as his armor bearer, You've got to be with, I, nor, I didn't even expect anything. Your sacrifice, your gifts to God is the payment. That is God. Can I help you? You can call it ministry all you want, but if somebody got to pay you to do it, that's a job. That's a job. That's not really from your heart. As when I was an evangelist, and I evangelized before I was pastoring. Nobody had to pay me to come and preach the word of God. As a matter of fact, most of the time, I, I, I really want to say all the time, but I might, I, I, maybe there was a time or two, but most of the time, I didn't even take an offering. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take anything. What are your motives like? Are you doing stuff to position yourself, maneuver yourself, to get selfish gain? No. Examine yourself. Be willing to sacrifice. Well, I, they don't understand my gift, and I, you, you know, and, and let me let me just cancel something in the spirit. Let me cancel something in the spirit. Somebody done told you, I'm not going to let them take advantage of me. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You have got to go through the process. Trust. Follow. Don't, don't allow folks with trust issues and people who, 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 who ain't never even sat at a church for more than two months. Just going everywhere. Don't allow those people to speak into your life. And bring that spirit of instability or instability in your life with those type of words of you not being appreciated and people not respecting your gift and uh, you got a gift this and you, no, 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 no. Become a part of the winner's circle. Trust, follow, be able to be corrected. Your leader authority, and whatever it is, somebody should be able to tell you something without you being so sensitive. That spirit of sensitivity, don't you let that block who you are in God. I ain't got, I can, me and my family can go in. Well, they are missed. You're just hurting yourself if somebody can't correct you. 
and be willing to sacrifice your time, your gifts, your talents, and watch God produce greatness in your life. Listen, I'm done. I'm done. I pray that the word was a blessing for you tonight. I pray that the Lord did something in you. Usually when it comes to correction and different things like that, you know, a lot of people, they run away from stuff like that. People like candy. They love candy. But tonight I pray that the meat of God's word will allow you to grow, examine yourself, and stop making excuses so you can be who he has called for you to be. Listen tonight as you give. If you want to sow into this word, if you, amen, the word has blessed you in a great way, or if you're tithing tonight, you can text the word TC Nashville. It'll trigger a link, and you can give that way, be it tithe, be it a general Bible class offering. You can do that. We are also on Cash App. Same word, TC Nashville. That stands for Triumphant Church. TC Nashville. You'll find us. And as you're sowing, I'm going to pray God's blessings over your tithe, over your giving tonight. I pray that this word sinks deep down in your heart and in your mind. So you can be a part of the winner's circle. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the gifts tonight. I thank you for those who are tithing, those that are sowing. Lord, I thank you for the open hearts to receive your word tonight. We love you, and we honor you, and we praise you because there is nobody like you. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. God bless you. Join us this Sunday. 10.30 a.m. is our pre-worship experience. And at 11 o'clock, we will be a beginning worship this Sunday in person, outside, in the parking lot. I can't wait to see you there this Sunday. We are triumphant. Thank you for watching.